Ms. Warmoth, do you acknowledge that some of the strange manifestations of this DEI embrace have put negative pressures on the Army's recruiting? Uh, Congressman, I'm not sure exactly what specifically you're referring to, but when we've okay, done so surveys... Okay, so if you put that slide up on the screen, I'll give you one. This is a vignette aid. It's an Army training, and it's regarding the use of showers. And the vignette reads, A soldier transitioned from male to female, as indicated in Deers. The soldier did not have sex reassignment surgery. The transgender service member is using the female showers and has expressed privacy concerns regarding the open bay shower configuration. Similarly... Other soldiers have expressed discomfort showering with a female who has male genitalia. What's your reaction to that? My reaction, Congressman, is we're focused on building cohesive teams that are trained, disciplined, and fit. Well, General McConville, I'll give you the next chance. Do you think that it builds cohesive teams to have biological males showering with women? I think we need to respect the privacy of our soldiers and, and have an environment where everyone can thrive. I am positing that when there is a focus on how biological men are going to shower with women and on unconscious bias training, which you require, and on mandatory gender sensitivity training, that like the call is coming from inside the house at DOD yeah. on some of these problems. And the proof's in the pudding. That there seems to be a cognitive dissonance between your recruiting nightmare that we are living through, the nation's recruiting nightmare at the Army, and this kind of stuff. I don't think it's going to be a big, like, positive recruiting pitch to women that when someone shows up with male genitalia in their shower stall, that we tell them that we're trying to build a cohesive team. I would posit to you that that probably makes the team a little less cohesive.